Europe is done with Russia's attack and is fighting back. Europe has had a long and complicated relationship with Russia. For centuries, the two regions have been intertwined through trade, diplomacy, and warfare. However, in recent years, tensions have been rising as Russia has been increasingly assertive on the world stage and is engaged in actions that many in Europe see as a threatening or hostile. As a result, many European countries have become fed up with Russia and are starting to push back. No more Mr. Nice Guy is how Europe is finally standing up to Russia's aggression. In this video, we're going to see how Europe is fighting back against the Russians and what the impact of this decision would be in a global perspective. Without further ado, let's jump into the video and see what lies to be uncovered. One major source of tension between Europe and Russia is the conflict in Ukraine. This conflict has killed thousands and displaced even more. The European Union and many of its member states have imposed sanctions on Russia in response to these actions and have provided financial and military aid to Ukraine. This has in turn led to fears of rolling blackouts triggered by Russian energy export cuts and Moscow's war in Ukraine this winter. A warm start to the heating season in October and November enabled the EU to slash natural gas consumption and store more fuel for the winter months. Meanwhile, slumping Chinese demand due to COVID lockdowns allowed liquefied natural gas tankers bound for Asia to be rerouted to the bloc. EU officials also played a role encouraging countries to cut consumption, improve efficiency, and boost alternative energy supplies to op offset the drop in supply. But luck can run either way. A reversal of this year's fortunes, combined with further natural gas export cuts by Russia, could leave Europe with insufficient energy supplies and skyrocketing prices next winter, some analysts say. The IEA estimated that EU gas deficit in 2023 could be as high as 57 billion cubic meters, or nearly 15% of its forecast demand. Though it said measures currently being implemented, such as the new solar and wind projects, should cut the shortfall to 27 BCM. The EU could cover the remaining gap if it immediately invests an additional 100 billion euros, which is $107 billion, to expand alternative energy projects and boost energy efficiency, the IEA estimated. Natural gas is largely used to heat homes and buildings, fuel power plants, and run industrial processes such as the production of fertilizers. A shortfall would lead to high and volatile energy prices in the EU, triggering industrial and household demand destruction and energy rationing. Some nations have already put contingency plans in place should a crisis arise. Much depends on what the Kremlin does or doesn't do. In any case, though, analysts will say that while the EU may suffer in the short-term period from the reduction in energy supplies due to the Brussels-Moscow showdown over the invasion of the Ukraine, Russia is set to lose in the long term. Moscow's blackmail has, once and for all, convinced EU countries that Moscow isn't a reliable energy supplier. Europe steps up efforts to drop its dependence on Moscow within either three years or so Europe won't be needing Russian oil and gas anymore for sustenance. This is a monumental change that could never have been predicted before Putin launched an all-out strike against Ukraine in the 24th of February. Russia has been the leading exporter of gas to Europe from the 1960s and the symbiotic relationship survived both the depths of the Cold War and even the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. By the 2000s, Russia's position as the leading supplier of natural gas to Europe seemed to be assured for decades to come. Putin, who took power at the end of 1999, had agreed to invest more than $200 billion to develop new natural gas projects on the Yamal Peninsula in the far north to export to Europe. To get the gas to market while avoiding transit through Ukraine, he ordered the construction of several new export pipelines, including Nord Stream 1 and 2 to Germany and Turk Stream to Turkey. Those investments helped Russia generate annual European gas export revenues of more than $50 billion in recent years. With European and domestic gas production falling, Russia looked to set to continue to reap a windfall from gas exports to the EU. European gas demand was projected to keep growing for at least another decade, but Putin's decision to launch an invasion of Ukraine and his subsequent cutoff of gas exports to Europe has dashed the EU's trust in the Kremlin for a generation. 
The war has accelerated Europe's transition away from fossil fuels to cleaner alternatives, with the result that in five years' time, Turkey will remain the sole buyer of Russian gas in Europe. The final result is clear that Putin has not simply committed gas suicide. Another area of contention is Russia's interference in European elections. There is evidence that Russia has tried to interfere in elections in various European countries, including France, Germany, and even the United States. There have been evidences of several reports that have found that Russia sought to influence voter behavior and in some cases suppress turnout. These conclusions echo the conclusions of the U.S. official investigations into the 2016 presidential elections, which reported that Russians sought to damage Democrat Hillary Clinton and elect her rival, Republican Donald Trump, while also working to undermine democratic institutions in the United States. There were no known high-profile hacking efforts, such as that of the Democratic National Committee, during the 2016 U.S. presidential campaign. Nor did there appear to be efforts to damage individual candidates, as of what happened in 2017, when then-candidate Emmanuel Macron's campaign emails were published online two days before he were elected the president of France. But a top EU security official said Friday that there was nevertheless an ongoing and significant Russian effort to target Europeans with disinformation on a daily basis. This has led to a sense of mistrust and frustration among many Europeans, who see Russia as attempting to undermine their democratic processes. In addition to these specific issues, there is also a general sense of unease in Europe about Russia's growing military power and aggressive foreign policy. Russia has been increasing its military spending and has been involved in conflicts in Syria and Afghanistan, among other places. Many Europeans see these actions as a threat to regional stability and are concerned about the possibility of future conflicts. Overall, it is clear that Europe is done with Russia and is increasingly willing to stand up to it. Whether that's through sanctions, military aid, or other means, many European countries are taking steps to push back against Russian actions as they see threatening or aggressive. The EU has recently released certain sanctions against Russia, and they are as follows. One is additional designations of almost 200 individuals and entities. This includes the Russian Armed Forces, as well as individual officers and defense industrial companies, members of the State Duma and Federation Council, ministers, Russian proxy authorities in occupied areas of Ukraine, and political parties. Two is two Russian banks, Credit Bank of Moscow and Dalvinistaki Bank, have been designated and a full transaction ban has been imposed on the Russian Regional Development Bank. It remains to be seen how this tension will play out in the future, but it is clear that Europe is no longer willing to just accept Russian behavior without challenge. Like and subscribe to stay updated on all international news, and comment below what your thoughts are about the EU sanctions against Russia.